If you wanna know how to actually stick with your New Year's resolutions, probably for the first time ever in 2023, look no further than this video. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Dr. Cara Nordeen and I have a PhD in a field called health communication, which is the study of behavior change. And in my case, I specifically focused in on mindset. So I'm here to give you the science behind self-help. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about four tips you've probably never heard before that are gonna help you actually stick with that resolution that you're setting for 2023. Before I start, I wanted to mention, if you don't know what goal to set and you're trying to figure out how to set a goal that's effective and can help you follow through, I'm gonna link a video that I have on that subject so that you can watch it if you need that extra guidance. All right, tip number one for setting a resolution in 2023 is to put calendar before commitment. What do I mean by that? I want you to pull out your 2023 calendar and I want you to fill it out. I want you to put all your kids' school vacations on there. I want you to put all your appointments. I want you to put that major surgery your brother-in-law is having. I want you to get a clear idea of what is happening in 2023 before we go about setting any resolutions of what we might want to be doing. The reason that this is so important is that so many people, when they set goals, they don't take into account real life circumstances. But life is gonna life and we have to be prepared for that. Now, none of these things that could be happening in your life necessarily mean you can't pursue a certain goal, but it might mean that you have to be really aware before you go into that goal and before you make the commitment. So tip number one is to scan your calendar before making a commitment. Tip number two is to write down the daily process of pursuing that goal before you commit to it. So let's say, for example, that the goal that you want to pursue is you wanna run a marathon. I want you to really think about on your worst day and on your best day, what is that going to look like? What sacrifices are you going to have to make? For example, maybe you're gonna to have to deal with the fact that on your long run days, you're gonna be really tired that afternoon and you might not be as focused at work. Maybe you don't have a lot of time to run in your schedule and so you're going to have to give up a little bit of sleep and wake up super early. So often when we set a resolution, we are so excited and committed to the outcome of that resolution, but we're not equally as clear and as excited about the process. If you pursue a resolution, if you set a resolution, if you give yourself a big goal, but you never stop to consider if you actually want to opt in to the day-to-day -day of pursuing that goal, that's an easy reason for your brain to say, hey, let's abandon this now that it's March and we really don't wanna do this work. If you want to change in life, if you want to accomplish something, you have to be as committed to the day-to-day -day pursuit of that and to doing the hard things on a daily basis as you are to the end result, the big rah, rah, rah when you finally get there. So now moving into actually the day-to-day -day process of following through on that resolution, I'm gonna give you tip number three, which is about engaging social support. There are studies that show that when we have a sense of community surrounding our goal, we tend to be more committed to it and we tend to persevere through challenges. What exactly could that look like? Well, I'll give you a personal example. One year as a resolution, I decided to pick up a new healthy habit every single month. So I called up my cousin, who's a really good friend of mine, and I said, hey, do you wanna do this with me? And she said, yes. So every single month, we sat down together, we talked about what habit we were gonna pick up, we anticipated those obstacles, and we kept in touch with each other throughout the month to support each other. Now, if you don't have a sense of social support, if you don't have anyone in your life who's interested in personal development like you are, I highly suggest you go and check out our Alliance Coaching Program. This is a one-on-one -on -one coaching program where we coach you on your behavior. You are working with a coach who every week is giving you feedback and education and tips and holding you accountable to that resolution. So don't miss that sense of support. If you can't get it somewhere else, we can absolutely provide it for you. And tip number four, and this is a really fun one, is to leverage environmental changes in order to help you pursue your goal. Okay, what the heck do you mean by that, Karn? What I mean is that there's research that shows that when we get into a new environment, some of our habits tend to reset. 
So if you've been traveling for the holidays and you get back home, that's an opportunity to set up your environment in a way that supports you the most. For example, that might look like taking all your leggings that you use for running and putting them in the most accessible drawer in your closet. That might look like redoing your fridge so that the vegetables are right there where you can see them instead of jammed into the drawer. That might look like printing out some trackers for how far you've gotten on your financial goal and putting them in a really obvious space like your bathroom mirror or on your work desk. No matter what your goal is, what I want you to do is I want you to ask yourself, how can I change my environment so it is impossible to forget about this goal and so it's easier to do it than it is to not do it. Here's what I want you to do. If you have a goal and you need some suggestions on how you can adjust your environment to make that more conducive, I want you to put your goal in the comments and I will hop in here and personally answer you and give you some suggestions on how you can change your environment. Trust me, as someone who's worked with hundreds of clients now on tons of different goals, there are some really, really creative ways we can shift things to make your environment help set you up for success. One thing I didn't touch on in this video is self-accountability. We have to hold ourselves accountable, but a lot of us never learned that skill. So if you wanna learn more about the self-accountability skill, what I want you to do is I want you to go to this video that I have. I just recorded this for you. It's full of science-backed tips and it's gonna help you build that self-accountability skill that's going to stack on top of these tips and make your New Year's resolution into a success. Hit that subscribe button before you go and make sure to check back next week because I've got videos coming on tons of different specific resolutions and tips for achieving each and every one of them.